So to those of you who were on the live video and stayed to the end, I said I was gonna to try to do a meet the collection this week with my blue ghost mail, but I changed my mind for reasons that I will discuss further in the future. Uh, but instead I have Tux out here, my male, one of my male Sumatran short tails, uh, and Incognito is with him as well, uh, just to kind of cameo in the video. Uh, so Tux is the one to the left who is periscoping. Incognito is to the right. So that is Sir Tux right there. And he, I got both these animals from Kara at the blood cell, but Tux here was produced by Jeff Hartwig. Um, Jeff Hartwig also produced my male olive python. And then I think that's it that I have that he produced. And Incognito over here, of course, was produced by Kara. Um, Incognito is just such a love. Um, but this guy, he's great. And he's a little bit more vocal. And so sometimes some of his offspring will be vocal as well, but he's never ever struck at me. He's never given me a hard time with anything. I mean, he's just as easy going as she is. She's just, um, if, if you didn't know them, you would think she's nicer just because she's not as boisterous as he is. And so you can see the difference a little bit. With her, you can see some faint pattern down by her tail. And now obviously she's still gaining weight from laying her last clutch. Uh, both of them just went to the bathroom. He passed a little more than she did, um, but she's obviously holding on to a little bit more right now because she's putting weight back on post production. But as I said, you can see some pattern on her tail, but as you swing over to his, you see a little bit more. Um, and from what I've seen of the Hartwig line, there's just a little bit more of those brown undertones, which you can see there. Uh, whereas you just really don't see that as much with her. With the sun hitting down, you can kind of almost see like some oscillating marks on her back where her pattern is, but it's a lot more obvious when you come over here and look at this guy. Now, obviously, like I said, she's down a little weight. This guy I fed like I was gonna breed him and I had no intention of breeding him this winter because I wanted to get Midnight Rider a try with her. Um, so I have him a little thinner than I probably should have. I just kind of am so used to feeding him on a breeding schedule because, you know, every other year, pretty much, he's been paired up for me, but this year. Um, so that was just my mistake in kind of being in a routine for the last, um, you know, six years and not really thinking because I got Tux in 2014 along with Sambuca. Uh, I bought them as a pair together. Uh, they produced two clutches together for me, 2015 and 2016. Uh, and then Tuxin Incognito produced for me in 2016 and 2018. So Tuxus sired four clutches with me. Um, I believe he sired prior clutches with Kara as well. I know Incognito did. I know Incognito was bred to Jackson, I believe at some point. Um, but definitely out of the two of them, as far as looks go, I prefer her. Um, personality too. I mean, overall, she's just, uh, she's the perfect animal. She's beautiful. She's great. Uh, I can take her to programs. Tux can do all that too, but because he's huffy, it makes people that are on easy a little bit more apt to be nervous. Um, but Tux is the reason why you see some of the babies that I've produced with orange eyes. Um, Incognito has orange eyes too, but not so much. Although right now they look on par. His really aren't as fired up as they can be, and hers are about as fired up as they get. Um, and as you can see too, those of you that had seen her when her head was swollen, you can see her head is, is all the way back to normal. She's like, what the hell are you doing? Hi, babe, what are you doing? But yeah, you can see she's all healed up and good to go. Um, and obviously he didn't have any issues, so he, you know, looks as he should. But you can just see his demeanor and the way he is when I approach. Um, if you know these animals, you can just see he's a little bit more weary oh, and I've never shoved the phone in his face like this. Incognito is a little more used to it. Um, she's not really a fan of it, but she kind of tolerates it out here. If she's in her cage, she doesn't tolerate it so much. That's like her space and, and it's time, but he's doing really well and he's a really great animal. Um, but like I said, oh, what? Do you just notice it there? Um, 
like I said, it'll, be, it'll become apparent in the future why I'm doing this video together, but they're just wonderful, wonderful animals. And, uh, you know, I forget how old Tux is. Incognito, if I'm not mistaken, is 12 years old. I believe she's a 2008 animal. Come here. Hi, everybody. Say hi to YouTube. No? <gasps> Are you offended? Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. He's a pretty independent guy. <laughs> uh, he hasn't been outside in a, in a bit. I'm trying to think when the last time I dragged him out here was. Oh, he's going to find the higher grass and tuck himself in there. Now, this is a very short tail thing to do. We always talk about how they don't really like hide so much, but they like to not be seen. They like when the grass is a little taller and they'll crawl through it like this and they'll have their head out in a place where they can kind of see what's going on around them, but they feel like they're concealed. So you can see, even though he's a sizable snake and my grass actually just got cut not too long ago, um, but you can see he can bury himself pretty well, even in the short grass. That's why he's really forcing his head down in there to try to get in there as much as he can. And uh, I like bringing them out like this because it gives them, you know, a little different texture, a little bit something different. But you can see, like I said, his he's, personality is a little bit different than hers. He's a little more weary. She's just still chilling over there. She doesn't really give a fuck about anything. He's definitely a little more high strung, but uh, you know, he's never given me any kind of problem. I just don't use him for those programs, like I said, because he'll make people nervous. But they're just great animals. And I'm always surprised when somebody says they have one that's like not fantastic, because I've just never had one that wasn't. Um, you know, they're so great. I keep going back to her and it's his video, but I just, I adore this, this animal. She has so much of my heart. She's just perfection to me, you know? And I have um, babies that you would know that Tux produced. Uh, Black Magic is a Tux Sambuca product, so that's his daughter. Uh, Morticia is his daughter with Incognito. Um, Voodoo Queen is his daughter with Incognito. Then I have that one that was on the, uh, the live video the other day, that baby, that's also from him and Incognito. That one's just not yet named. Uh, that's, that's one of the 2018 babies. Um, these new, the new clutch, like I said, is from Midnight Rider, so those aren't tucks. The little, little babies that I have right now are not his. That's the first dark Sumatrans that I've produced that he wasn't involved with. Um, all the prior clutches were him, and the only other Sumatran clutch that he didn't sire besides this latest one was the chrome heads from last year that was chrome to chrome. Uh, obviously, he wasn't involved in that. I don't know where you're going, dude. You're heading for the bamboo forest. The bamboo forest uh, is about to be no more. Um, just talked to my, my landlord today, and she wants it to get out of here, so we're going to see what we can do to get it out of here. Uh, the kid that lived here prior to me planted like five sticks of bamboo and it's now just taken over everywhere. So I'm going to cut some up for myself and cut some up for some other people, sell a little bit of it, and then uh, we will uh, figure out how to get it out of here. I'm sure that's going to be a process, but I'm not going to let him go too much further. But yeah, all the short tails that come out here really love this because obviously the bamboo, all the leaves fall off and they get this litter where they can really tuck themselves in there. And you can see he's making himself a, a little spot in there, like I said. Cool snake. I don't mind seeing the pattern that much, but my goal with these guys is eventually not to have that, uh, that brown there. So Tux, Tux was a good starting point for me because he is very dark, he's very nice, very high-end animal but he, he doesn't represent my end game. Uh, Incognito is much closer to where I want to be. Um, so that's why I paired them together. And then that's why I bought Midnight Rider because he's a bit darker than Tux and I can continue to work towards my goals there. So eventually my goal is to put Midnight Rider to Morticia uh, mainly and Voodoo Queen. And that should really get me the darkest babies I've produced to date. Those two girls should be ready to go next year, hopefully. Um, Age-wise, they're there this year. Size-wise, they're not quite. But as you can see, the Sumatrans, a lot of them stay a lot smaller than people think. Oh, he's coming through. So see, that's what they like right there. His head's right in the center of the shot. 
So he feels like his body's concealed right now, but he can see. So this is this is like short tail 101. Uh, they absolutely love doing this. If you give them an opportunity to do this, they will do it quite often. Um, and even with newspaper, they'll do it where they, they slide their bodies underneath the paper and then just their heads are sticking out. Um, and just be alert when they're like this, they're ambush predators. So if you just reach in on them and they've been sitting there for a long time, you could elicit a food response. I find mine to be pretty intelligent to where they don't make mistakes with me. Once they smell food thawing, it's a different story. There's just, they know there's food somewhere and they don't care who they have to kill to get it. Uh, but if they don't smell food, mine are usually pretty good. But always be aware that they could be thinking food first, especially if they're sitting like this. This is what they're doing. They're gonna sit there, sit there, sit there, sit there for weeks if they need to and wait for something to come by that they can grab and overpower. And uh, that's why they're so good at striking in any direction and lightning fast and throwing their entire body because of the way they're designed, they're not actively hunting. So they have to be able to capitalize on every opportunity that they have, uh, more so than an active hunter that can continue to follow food and go out and whatever. That These guys have to wait for food to come to them. Um, and they don't have to, but that's just how they're designed. Uh, so they're not usually out actively hunting for food. They find a spot like this where they can wait and, uh, you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll find a spot that's near a trail that rodents are using or, you know, near nesting birds or whatever it is that they're after. And uh, they'll wait and wait and wait for that opportunity. So you can see Tux is, is doing that now quite brilliantly. And for a sizable snake, you know, he's hidden most of his body pretty good. You know, you got to imagine in his natural environment, he'd be a little bit more camouflaged, probably bury himself a little bit more. So we'll say goodbye to Mr. Tux, and we'll come over here one last time to the lovely lady, and say goodbye to Miss Incognito. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, if you guys see people that have questions that are answered in a video, don't be afraid to share that video for them, or. Uh, you know, refer them to the channel. Things are going pretty well. I think people are receiving the videos pretty well, so I'll keep making them. We'll see you guys, thank you.